Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. We talk about Blu-rays here, and I'm doing another quick uh, update. I've got the new disc box out, and um, let's get into this. I'll start with the documentary here, Heart Worn Highways. This is from 1976, but not released until 1981, as far as I know. Um, this is from Kino uh, Classics, Kino Lorber, and Sea Lion Films. And just a really great um, music doc documentary, country music documentary, um, featuring the likes of, you know, Towns Van Zant and David Allen Coe and Guy Clark, Steve Young, Steve Earle, uh, Charlie Daniels and his band. And um, yeah, it's just a really wonderful sort of observational documentary where we're seeing some of these guys recording in a recording studio. We're seeing some of them. Uh, David Allen Coe performs at uh, Tennessee. I want to say it's Tennessee State Prison. Uh, so you get to see that concert at the end. And it's really neat because they sort of capture this scene that's happening in the mid to late 70s uh, in, I guess, in and around Nashville. And it's just really captivating, you know, uh, just sort of fly on the wall documentary stuff combined with a really interesting, um, almost music video take, you know, where when the songs are being sung, suddenly we'll cut to, you know, footage of the area. Uh, you know, if there's a song about a highway, suddenly we've got cars driving on an, on a freeway nearby and, it, and it sort of takes on a, like I said, sort of a music video quality during those sequences, but there's just some great, you know, personal moments and, you know, great performances and just great philosophy sort of spun out of this. And, uh, yeah, I, I really dug it. And it's really, really something special. Um, it says, sometimes a documentary filmmaker is present at precisely the right moment to capture lightning in a bottle. It happened with Bob Dylan and Don't Look Back, Chet Baker and Let's Get Lost. And it happened in 1976's Heartworn Highways. This iconic... Uh, Outlaw Country documentary saw filmmaker James Zapolsky, uh, Zala Zalapsky, excuse me, travel to Texas and Tennessee to capture the radical artists reclaiming the genre by rejecting the mainstream Nashville machine. Towns Van Zant, Guy Clark, Steve Young, David Allen Coe, Steve Earle, and many others provide musical highlights, including Clark's, uh, Clark's iconic opening rendition of uh, L.A. Freeway. That's a really great scene it's just guy clark i guess he's warming up for a concert that he will perform later that night and he sings this song la freeway which i'd never heard before and it's a really really good tune um but there's a great rawness to a lot of these performances um and they do some really cool stuff in the re recording studio one particular sequence where they're laying down the main vocal track and then they bring in the overdubbing for the harmonica and we have the singer uh, I forget what his name is, Larry. Oh, shoot. Um, but he's got this great voice, and suddenly he's behind the harmonica player, and you hear his voice playing, and you see the harmonica player, you know, that is the harmonica that goes into the song. And it's a really nice touch, a really nice editing touch. And there's there's a few of those throughout. So I really enjoyed this. Um, it says um, the... Uh, other songs include, uh, let's see here, Steve Young's Alabama Highways and Van Zandt's Emotional uh, Waiting Around to Die. Um, there's another one in there called, shoot, uh, it's something about wine, and I'm, I'm blanking on it, but I really dug that song too. Um, it says, the hard living and hard partying lifestyles of the outlaw country figure, figures, country's figureheads are played out on screen as we visit uh, Van Zant's Austin trailer, see co-play Tennessee State Prison, join the gang in Nashville's notorious wigwam tavern, and witness a liquor-fueled Christmas at Clark's house. No wonder the film's original tagline read, the best music and the best whiskey come from the same part of the country. Outside of a couple festival screenings, the movie remained unreleased for five years after its completion. It has been building a cult audience ever since. That's from Light in the Attic Records talking about it. Um, it has some nice bonus features. There is an audio commentary with producer Graham Leader and editor A.D. Philip Shopper. Uh, there is a booklet essay by Graham Leader and Philip Shopper, which is nice. Kinos don't always have booklets. 
but you get a nice little biography of the director and it's a nice little booklet makes for a nice release um, uh, let's see here then you have bonus footage 52 minutes of uh, stuff that wasn't included in the film and then trailers for the film and the follow up which I haven't had a chance to watch Heartworn Highways Revisited uh, and this is from I want to say this is it says uh, I think this is from this year that, well this release is but I'm not sure when this film came out but it says 2021 marks the 45th anniversary of the seminal music doc uh, Heartworn Highways a film that captured the nascent roots of the outlaw country movement uh, in the mid 70s today Heartworn Highways Revisited explores and celebrates the authenticity and the spirit of that legendary film via a community of contemporary musicians creating music in Nashville in Heartworn Highways Revisited. The filmmakers reunite with Heartworn Highway originals Guy Clark, Steve Young, and David Allen Coe while focusing on the next generation of, quote, outlaws, including John McCauley, Johnny Fritz, Josh Headley, Justin Towns, Earl, uh, Shovels and Rope, Langhorn Slim, Robert Ellis, Andrew Combs, Shelley Colvin, Phil Hummer, and others who honor the traditions of their predecessors while forging a highway all their own. And this one includes a commentary with the director, Wayne Price. Um, so I want to check this out now that I've seen the other one. But it's nice that Kino put them out in tandem. So you have kind of like a bonus doc there to go with that one. Um, all right, let's do some genre stuff here. So you always got to keep, whoops, an eye on uh, the folks at Eureka Entertainment. Between the Masters of Cinema and their straight-up Eureka Entertainment line, we get all kinds of interesting stuff. So I've been waiting on this one for a while. I pre-ordered it. It's the Karloff at Columbia set. It is a two-disc set. This is a Region B-locked disc, as you can see on the back here. Uh, it includes the films The Black Room, the Man They Could Not Hang, The Man With Nine Lives, Before I Hang, The Devil Commands, The Boogeyman Will Get You. So I want to say that's five films on two discs. And um, I'll, I'll just pop this out of the lovely slipcase. This is what the interior artwork looks like. <laughs> nice Karloff beard action happening. And then we got a nice thick booklet that comes with it. Essays about, looks like each of the films pretty much. Um, the two disc. But, uh, so yeah, it includes, like I said, those films. I want to make sure I didn't miss any. Um, the Black Room, The Man They Could Not Hang, The Man With Nine Lives, before I Hang, and The Devil Commands. Yes. Uh, oh, and The Boogeyman Will Get You. So I think that's actually six films. Um, it says all six presented in 1080p across two Blu-ray discs, optional uh, subtitles, brand new audio commentaries on The Black Room, uh, Before I Hang, and The Boogeyman Will Get You with critic Kevin Lyons and author film historian Jonathan Rigby. Brand new audio commentaries on The Man They Could Not Hang, the Man with Nine Lives and the Devil Commands by author Stephen Jones and author critic Kim Newman, one of my favorite duos and commentaries. I very much look forward to those tracks. Uh, extensive stills, uh, still galleries for each film. Karloff on the Radio, a selection of radio episodes starring Boris Karloff, plus a collector's booklet featuring writings on all six films by Karloff expert Stephen Jacobs, author of Boris Karloff, More Than a Monster, film critic and author John Towelson, and film scholar Craig Ian Mann. So really a nice little package of Karloff films. I don't think I've seen any of them, to be honest. So I'll be digging into this set hopefully in the next couple months. Uh, I picked this up via Diabolic DVD. They are kind of my go-to for Eureka titles, unless... I mean, you can wait for sales, but some of these... Um, these sets I get a little concerned I don't know that they'll sell out but you never can tell and Diabolic is always very reliable so I kind of like that I you know threw it on the money and it's done and then I forget about it and it just shows up like a present it's really nice and so I ordered usually I'll order more than one Eureka title at a time and in this case I also got 
this one, this horror double, double feature. Now, this may look familiar. There's also a uh, Mill Creek version, but it doesn't have the extras that this has, which is one of the reasons I snagged this set. As you can see, it's Nightwing and Shadow of the Hawk uh, from... Both are uh, the 79 and 76. Um, Nightwing is a bat movie. Uh, it says uh, Youngman Duran, uh, Nick Mancuso, um, Maskai Indian tribal deputy is torn between the modern world and the ancient mysticism of his people. During his patrol, he is summoned to investigate the bizarre death of a horse. The animal exhibits razor sharp wounds that no coyote or mountain lion could inflict. Meanwhile, his girlfriend on a camping trip in the desert is attacked by thousands of swarming bats. Duran learns of the attack and sets out to save her, not knowing the terror that looms ahead. Uh, featuring special effects by Carlo Rombaldi, who of course worked on Alien, E.T., uh, and others. Nightwing has been described in recent years as an eco-gothic western and a great exploration of social change and race relations. So that is Nightwing. And then for Shadow of the Hawk, which I only saw for the first time two or three years ago and very much enjoyed. Uh, it's a Jan Michael Vincent film. Um, an aging medicine man, uh, played by Chief Dan George, uh, recruits his skeptical grandson, Mike, Jan Michael Vincent, to aid him in the spiritual battle against evil spirits and black magic, aided by a freelance reporter, Marilyn Hassett, who I'm a big fan of as well. Um... Can Mike reconnect with his roots and defeat the evil threatening his tribe? Filmed in the forests of British Columbia to stunning effect, Shadow of the Hawk features a number of eerie and effective sequences of supernatural terror. So here is, you know, the inside of this. Again, we get a little bit of a booklet there. And they're both on one disc. You have that reverse artwork if you want. I think I kind of like the other stuff. Um... This is also region B locked, so if you want to stay in the States, again, you can go for the Mill Creek release, but um, one of the reasons I snagged this is because of the commentaries. You have on, let's see, Nightwing, brand new audio commentary from film historians Lee Gambin and Amanda Reyes. I'm a big fan of both of them, and I've enjoyed their commentaries both separately in the past. I've never heard, they may have done a commentary together, uh, in fact, I, pro I bet they probably have, but uh, I've never heard them together, and that's kind of an all-star game for me, so I'm excited to hear that track. And then Shadow of the Hawk has a brand new uh, audio commentary with film writer Mike McPadden and Ben Reiser. Of course, the late Mike McPadden and his podcast co-host Ben Reiser, who was part of their podcast uh, 70 Films I Saw in the 70s, which is a really great show uh, that I do recommend you check out, you know, despite Mike's absence. Um, so I want to hear that track as well. Uh, and there's an audio SK. This is also on um, Shadow of the Hawk. Uh, you have an audio essay by John Edgar Browning. It's called uh, Oil and the Geopolitics of Blood. Uh, and, and that's it. A uh, booklet featuring essays by Lee Gambin and film historian and author Craig Ian Mann. Um, so just a really nice two disc, well, one disc set, two movie set. Um, I picked up a 4K. I went down to Best Buy and snagged this one in person. And Amazon was being difficult about allowing an order of this one, and that's fine. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of Speed. Uh, I think it's one of the great blockbuster films of the 90s and seems to only get better each time I watch it. Uh, the first time I saw it, I do remember that the sort of triple ending, if you will, or the triple, you know, one thing after another kind of that happens Um was kind of eye rolling for me then, but for some reason now, I don't know. I really enjoy it. I love the opening setup. You have the sort of police dealing with an elevator, uh, potential issue where Dennis Hopper is trying to kill a bunch of people and they are able to thwart him. And that sort of sets up the rivalry between Keanu Reeves and, um, and Dennis Hopper, who is great in this film. Uh, and I do love the chemistry between Reeves and and uh, Jeff Daniels are really great. Uh, Joe Morton is really great in this movie. You know, uh, Sandy Bullock is great in this movie. It's just one of the great, like I said, blockbusters of that period. And I was really excited to get this. Now, I will tell you, don't take my word for it, but this 4K transfer didn't blow me away in the way that I hoped it would. And that's not to say that it's not good looking and that you won't experience uh, you know, loving it, 
Uh, but I, I don't know if it, what kind of stock it was shot on or what the deal is, but, um, it didn't quite hook me like I had hoped, but I'm not regretting the purchase in any way, regardless. Uh, this of course is porting over some older features. It looks like audio commentary with director Jan de Bont, audio commentary by screenwriter, uh, Graham Yost and producer Mark Gordon. That's on the HD disc and those are carried over to the Blu-ray disc. And then there's, looks like, uh, a few featurettes as well on the Blu-ray side of things. Um, but I couldn't not get this. I, I'm a big speed fan and I know I'll get a lot of mileage out of this pun intended. And then I've got, um, a few Kino titles here. I'm just going to talk about briefly. I just got these, so I haven't had a chance to watch them yet. Um, I've definitely heard of this one. I've, I remember seeing a VHS of this, uh, but a very interesting cast. You have Scott Glenn, Barbara Carrera, Edward Fox, and Lawrence Olivier in Wild Geese 2. This is directed by Peter Hunt. Uh, who, of course, dr- did some James Bond directing. And uh, this is a brand new 2K master. It says, from Peter Hunt, the acclaimed director of Honor Majesty's Secret Service. And that is one of, one of my favorite Bond films. Um, uh, Gold, Shout at the Devil, Death Hunt, and Assassination. Uh, he also did a really great TV movie that I love called The Beasts Are on the Street that Warner Archive put out on DVD. Um comes this action-packed sequel to the 1978 smash hit so apparently wild geese was a big hit uh let's see berlin's notorious spandau prison holds rudolf hess Laurence olivier the only surviving nazi leader in captivity hess knows secrets that could blast the civilized world apart but he will only talk if he's free the best in the business are hired mercenaries of legend who are adept of building armies pulling off coups and generally changing the shape of the emerging uh, emergent nations of the third world led by John Hadid, Scott Glenn. The team is back for their most spectacular rescue mission ever. The stellar cast includes Barbara Carrera, Edward Fox, Robert Weber, Ingrid Pitt, Stratford Johns, and Patrick Stewart. Um, so I may have only seen the first one of these, but I'll be darned if I can remember either one, but I am intrigued by this Peter Hunt directed, you know, um, this has an audio commentary by film historian Steve Mitchell and Howard S. Berger and an interview with co-star Barbara Carrera. Um, and like I said, brand new 2K Master. So a little um, 80s action with some older stars. I want to check that out. Now I've got a couple westerns, and these are a little bit older. This one is exciting to me because it is from director Bud Bedecker, who I'm a huge fan of. The Five Tall Tales Western set, which has now been broken into single releases uh, by Indicator is one of my favorite sets. In fact, you can see it right there. The uh, Bedecker Scott Westerns, I think, are some of the great Westerns of the 1960s. Well, 57, uh, late 50s, early 60s. And they are the bridge for me between, well, for anybody that's thinking about it, between um, traditional and even Baroque 50s Westerns and what would come in the 60s with Sergio Leone and his Westerns. I think those films are the link between the two, and I think they're really great. So Bedecker is an incredibly solid director, and I've never seen this one. This has Robert Ryan, Julia Adams from Creature from the Black Lagoon, and Rock Hudson, and this one is from 1952, so it precedes the westerns he did with Randolph Scott. Uh, It says from Bud Bedecker, the outstanding director of Red Ball Express, Wings of the Hawk. These are other kino releases they're calling out. Uh, Seven Men from Now, The Tall T and Ride Lonesome comes this classic western starring screen legends Robert Ryan and Rock Hudson post-Civil War Texas hosts a classic tale of brother against brother after returning from the war Don Hammond, Robert Ryan sees his high hopes fall apart under the pressure of gambling debts he turns to a life of crime pitting him against his younger brother Neil played by uh, Rock Hudson the new local marshal the stupendous cast includes Julie Adams, Raymond Burr, John McIntyre, James Arness, Dennis Weaver, uh, and Judith Braun. And this has an audio commentary by film historian Toby Roan, who has a great blog uh, called 50 Westerns from the 50s and is quite the expert on this period and the genre in general. So I'm sure that will be a great track to check out. But I was just very excited to get another Bud Bedecker film. I have not seen all of them, his films that is, and they always uh, have something interesting to show. So Horizons West for the Bedecker fans. And last, I have one called Quantez with Fred McMurray and Dorothy Malone. 
This one directed by Harry Keller, and it is from 1957. Screen legend Fred McMurray stars as John Coventry, the leader of a gang of robbers trying to escape across the Mexican border. I just like the idea of Fred McMurray as an outlaw. I don't know. There's something appealing about that idea to me. I haven't seen that too much. Um, uh, They're trying to escape across the Mexican border. The outlaws manage to elude the law and navigate the rough terrain, but the flight comes to a dangerous halt in the mysterious and abandoned town of Quantes. As their enemies get closer, tempers flare, betrayals set in, and lines are drawn between the men. Ruthless criminals end up as heroes and villains plunge further into despair in this suspenseful action-packed western. Wonderfully directed by Harry Keller and co-starring Dorothy Malone, James Barton, Sidney Chaplin, John Gavin, all right, uh, John Larch, and Michael Ansara. Uh, yeah, and this also has a commentary from Toby Roan, which is great. So you can get sort of dueling Toby Roan commentaries on two different westerns. Uh, I think I mentioned this is from 1957. But uh, again, that is fully his territory, and I'm sure he does a lovely job with that track. So that's going to do it for this collection update. Um, let me know if you picked up anything interesting recently and, and or if you're looking forward to anything uh, in the comments below. And uh, like and subscribe if you could, please. Uh, I always appreciate that. It helps the channel and lets me know what kind of content you guys are enjoying the most uh, and what I should keep doing, etc. So thank you for watching, as always. And I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.